Pray for me as I sing a simple song. The powerful song. He loves me. I was lost. I was in chains. The world had a hold on me. Kids, they really need it. Absolutely. We have others. 
Standing, let's sing a song, bless, asking for the blessings of God as well as blessing His name. Yes. 
world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering.
kind of mind-boggling and gets really complicated because we're assuming some things. Well, what if this hadn't happened? And what if this was to happen, then this could happen, this could happen. It's all speculation because we don't know the future and we can't change the past. But what if What if Jesus did not rise from the dead? What if there were no resurrection? Now, I'm not trying to be the mess with your minds, any, because this is actually what Paul was writing about in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 13. He sets this as the premise. What if Christ did not rise from the grave. And you know what? I think it'd be, I think is an important exercise for us to imagine a world that Christ did not rise from. Because obviously, we have been taking his resurrection all too much for granted. We have not accepted the importance of his resurrection in our lives <coughs> and what that means for us personally, but what it could mean for a lost and dying world who desperately needs to know the hope of his resurrection. Now, the word if is, a, is a, a big little word. And what it's telling us is there are questions that need to be answered. Paul uses it in the t our text this morning seven times. And after he uses the word if, he makes a statement of a, or a fact. And the question is, what if there is no resurrection? And then Paul begins to answer what would happen if there was no resurrection of Christ. And so we look in verses 12 and 13 of the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. And here we find, he says, Now if Christ is preached that he had been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. Number one, there is no foundation for our faith. I can have faith all I want that I'm going to stand here before you and then in a few minutes I'm going to hover about three feet up in the air. Y'all ready for that? I, I fully believe that I can do that. Now, I can believe all I want to. It ain't happening. Not until I get rid of a few pounds anyway. <laughs> it wouldn't happen then either. Because I'm not. Because there's no fact. Gravity is a fact. And trust me, gravity's got a hold of me. And I ain't hovering nowhere. No matter how much I believe it. There is no foundation for our faith. The difference from what the Bible says and all other religions, the difference between them, they've all both got philosophies, theologies, and all of that. They all have men who maybe were good men, maybe they did good things, maybe they didn't, but they all had a system of belief. None of them has this. Christ is risen from the grave. Do you realize Buddha is dead? Confucius is dead. Muhammad, yes, he's dead too. Mary is dead. Popes have died and will continue to die. Joseph Smith is dead. Preachers have died and will continue to die.
Paul states, if there is no resurrection, then Jesus is dead, still in the grave, and basically, how can a dead God save anyone? That's what he said. If Jesus is dead, we, at Easter, we might as well just let the kids find the Easter eggs and go home and not even worry about the Easter services. Why? What's the point? We have no foundation for our faith. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3.11, 1 Corinthians 3.11, it says, for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. It has to be upon the fact that Jesus lived, died, and rose again. That's the foundation. In the Old Testament, they had faith that one day the Messiah would come to shed his blood and die and be risen again. In Psalm 16.10, For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. If there is no resurrection, we have no foundation to build our faith or our lives upon. If, the, if there is no resurrection, then this thing is useless. Use it as a doorstop. If there's no resurrection, then that one lie, that one thing, makes all this other pointless and useless. There's no need to read God's Word, to study it, to memorize it, to meditate on it, or even to obey it if there's no resurrection. Verse four, in verse 14, a couple of things we find in it. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. It's useless. Vain. If Christ has not risen, then I have wasted 20 years of my life praying, seeking the Lord about what to preach. It's pointless. I'm praying to a dead man who doesn't hear. If Christ has not risen and he's still dead in the grave, then I am, well, it's like Joy Behart said, then I am mentally ill. <laughs> if, if Christ has risen, then I'm talking to myself. And I'm thinking God's talking to me. Through Jesus, who's dead. Yeah. I have wasted my time preparing. I have wasted my time preaching. Because there really isn't no gospel to preach. No good news. Now, I can get up here, and I can tell you that Jesus left the splendor of heaven to be born of a virgin, and 33 and a half years later, and then he was crucified and he died and was put in the grave. I can tell you that. And that's it. That's the end of the story. And we can get together and we can have a memorial service every week if we wanted to. And we could pre and we I could preach about how great a man he was. I'd be like many preachers who stand before thousands of people with no hope to give to hopeless people. And if there is no resurrection, I am a fool if Christ did not rise from the grave. Also, my faith would be in vain, be useless. And if Jesus is dead, then we're wasting our time serving him and worshiping him. If Jesus is still in the grave, then everything we do as saved people is false, it's phony, and it's foolish. It's foolishness. And if Jesus is still in the grave, I want you to think with me for a moment. All the preaching that you have heard all your life, all of our prayers, 
our services, our singing, our witnessing, our church attendance. It's all a big waste of time. We could be doing other things. We could be focusing on other things in our lives. <coughs> Are you listening? If there is no resurrection, then we are the victims of the cruelest hoax ever played out on humanity. And the Christian faith is the greatest joke of all time. <coughs> if, if there was no resurrection. In verse 15 and 16. Yes, we are found false witness, and we are found false witnesses of God. Because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up. And if, and in fact, the dead did do not rise. For it is if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. That makes us walking and talking liars, false witnesses. We come and we are Christians. We we want we give you know, we want to give everybody a piece of what God has given us. Well, if, if Christ didn't wasn't raised, what has He given us? Is He giving us hope? No, because He couldn't eat good Himself, right? If He really did not, every time we open our mouths to sing, to witness, to testify, to preach, to teach, or whatever we do in his name would be a lie. And we would be living a lie if Christ was not resurrected. If. Now look, I'm going to turn that around on this. All right? What does it say when we truly believe and truly know that Christ was resurrected and we do not live our lives in a way to show people that he is. Once again, what are they going to look at? They're going to look at our lives and say, really? I don't see that. So, if he's not been resurrected, we shouldn't lie about it in our lives and pretend in a fairy tale. But if he was resurrected, then doesn't it make sense that our lives reflected in everything that we do? Hmm. We can be false witnesses to this world by the way we live our lives, even if Christ was resurrected. In verse 17, in verse 17, we are false, we are false witnesses, but we also would have something, we would not have something that we currently have. Verse 17. <laughs> A suspected spam call. Boy, if, I, if we had time, I would mess with these folks. Calls. <laughs> no, I can't do it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Verse 17 of chapter 15. And it says, And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. You are still in your sins. What does that mean? You are still in your sins. Everyone in here, if Christ hasn't risen, you are still a sinner with no hope. That's what that means. There is no forgiveness of sin. All of us would be on a road to fiery pits of hell, thirsting, for that little drop of water, just like that rich man was, we would have no hope in this life. We would have no mediator in 1 Timothy 2.5. It says, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, 
the man Jesus Christ. If he's not alive, he is not there to mediate between us and God. We would totally, hopelessly not be able to reach God because we can't. Christ is dead. We have no advocate. We have no lawyer. We have no one to stand in our place. In 1 John 2, 1, 1 John 2, 1, it says, My little children, these things, 1 John 2, 1, My little children, these things are right unto you, so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. We have someone to stand in our stead. Someone to step between me and the punishment that I deserve. And said, Father. He says, Father. Lay not this sin to his charge. I pay it. But if he's dead, he can't do that, can he? So we have no mediator. We have no advocate. Let's look at verses 18 and 19. Then also those who have fallen asleep. Now, I, now that's not referring to y'all or part of some of y'all this morning. <laughs> what that's referring to is actually being dead. It says, those of you that have fallen asleep in Christ Say, children of God who have fallen asleep in Christ have died in Christ, you're perished. And if, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiful. What it means is we have no future. When we die, We'll have no, we'll never have any hope to see our family, see our friends, loved ones, because they're in hell right now. A place to Bible that is so dark that you'll only hear cries of billions upon billions of people. There'll be no hope. There is no reason to live our lives for a dead person. And if there was no resurrection, we that are trying to do right, and live for the Lord Jesus Christ, we will be the most miserable people. Do you believe that? Because there'll just be a series of rules. And you know what happens at the end? If there's no resurrection, at the end of our lives, it'll all be the same. We'll die. We'll be buried. If there's no resurrection. Man. How hopeless is that? <coughs> you know when we live our lives with no hope. Or live our lives with this world. The world sees it. No believe it. I think way too often. As born again children of God. We live our lives. As if there's no hope. As if Christ was not resurrected. Now we might say, well, I know he was. Look, he was. Let me get that in a second. He was. I believe it. But the world doesn't see it because we live our lives pretty much hopeless, without thinking, without remembering what Christ has done for us. So I'm going to just summarize this real quick. If there's no resurrection. We have no foundation. The word of God is the biggest lie known to mankind. Our preaching, our faith is in vain. <laughs> we are false witnesses, which makes us a bunch of liars. There is no forgiveness of our sins. Therefore, you know, what's the point? You know, we have no future. But I want to tell you the rest of the story. What the story part of the story that will give you right that should give us hope every moment of every, every waking moment of every day. Let's look at verses 20 through 22. But now Christ is risen. But now Christ is risen. 
from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Paul's not going to leave us without any hope. Paul's going to let us know that all this if business is for the birds. Because you can't change the fact. And the fact is that Christ rose from the grave, ascended into heaven, and is sitting on the right hand of the Father right now, waiting for him to come, waiting to come back to this earth to carry his people home. And I hope and pray that, that you're one of his people. You see, because Christ is risen from the grave, I have a firm foundation. A foundation that I can base my life upon. A foundation that I can base my family upon. A foundation that we can base this church upon. I have God's word that I can trust to be true. Preaching. I'm told now, and sometimes I beat my head up against the wall and sometimes it feels hopeless. Sometimes you just don't get it. Sometimes I don't get it. Sometimes it just feels like I'm spinning around in circles. But let me tell you, we're preaching and teaching God's word and God says it does not come in back, come back in vain. That it's going out for a purpose. And so my preaching, your teaching, your witnessing all has a purpose of God and it will reach where it's intended to reach I believe it, I understand it, because I understand that Christ is risen. Therefore, he is alive. And this message of the gospel of Jesus Christ is changing hearts and lives, even this morning. You know, I can trust the Lord with my life, because he's been there, he's faced death, and he's come back from it. I can sing to a living Savior. I can live my life for Christ, and it's, I know it's going to be useful. I can speak to others about a living Savior. I want my life to be a picture of that living Savior. I can be forgiven. In Romans 5, 1, look what it says. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I know that my future is bright. I know that the moment that I that this I take this last breath, whenever that is, from this life, I know that I have a bright future ahead. In John 14, 1, look what it says. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. Ladies and gentlemen here, I meet brothers and sisters. Let me tell you something. If that doesn't give you hope, then maybe you need to examine your relationship with that living Savior. Maybe you need to ask the question, why is it that I'm living a hopeless life in a, in a world, in, a, in, in a, a life that God has changed with a, such a bright future? Now, the facts are irrefutable. So, well, what brain how do you know? I mean, really, how do you know? That he's, that he's alive. Well, when you look at 1 Corinthians 15, 5 through 8, Jesus was seen by his disciples after he died. 500 people saw Jesus at the same time. Over 500 people in that 40 day period saw him, touched him, talked with him. And then there was a handful of them that actually saw him go into the clouds. 
<clears throat> not only not only that, but John the Apostle on the Isle of Patmos, Revelation, <clears throat> he saw that lamb that had been slain. Who is worthy to open these scrolls? And there he was in heaven. So the question is not that Jesus is risen. What is the number one way we know that Christ is risen? You ask me how I know he lives? He lives within my heart. That may not work for you, but it works for me. I know. I know he lives. The question is not if Jesus is risen, but what will you do? with a risen Jesus. You might be saying, I believe in Jesus, and the devils believe and tremble, you're not going to heaven. I mean, believing in that way is not enough. <coughs> you need to trust him. Give your heart and your life to him. If Jesus was, could sit right, would sit right next to you and ask you why would he let you into heaven, what would you say? Do you understand why it's so important that you believe that Jesus is real? That he was resurrected and that he's dwelling in heaven today? Well, we went over a whole bunch of stuff this already this morning. Let me just put it to you simply. You're doubting the resurrection of Jesus. You're doubting it. And you claim to be saved. You need, to check your, you need to check your salvation, your relationship with him. But this is the key focus. If you take the resurrection, prove to you your crumbles. You take the resurrection away, and our church is crumbled. You take everything else, you take your, whatever it is that we do in the name of Christ, and you say that Christ is dead, or you believe Christ is dead, and it all goes away in the corner. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is no one here that can make a claim that they could be good enough to get to heaven. For the wages of sin is death. Genesis 6.23. Because of that sin, we're going to die. So what does Romans 10.9 say? Romans 10.9 says something like this. I want to make sure I get it. I quote it correctly. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with a heart one believes unto righteousness and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For who, and go to verse 13, for whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And trust me, if he was dead, it would be foolishness to do that. He is alive. If you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you do, you're kind of on the fence about whether or not you believe this resurrection stuff. But you believe all this other. You believe he lived in a, let me tell you, you're lost in a goose. You can follow everything in this Bible all you want to, but it won't matter. You can live your life as pristinely and as sinlessly as you possibly can, and it won't matter. Without the blood and without the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it's all in vain. That's the importance of the resurrection. But now, is Christ risen from the dead and Jesus is alive? I serve a risen Savior. How about you? Whom do you serve? How are you living your life? Are you living in the hope and the light of resurrection? Of his resurrection, knowing that he promised to be of us life everlasting? Are you living it as the world is in darkness? Are you living your life even in the same 
same child of God and you're living your life hopeless, worried about your future, worried about what's going to happen to you in this life, and you're focusing everything on this life instead of focusing on the things that God has promised us in the future, beyond this life. I can't answer that question for you. Only you can talk to God through a risen Jesus Christ. You come to know what you need to do this morning. So as we stand and